Hey everyone, it's Joni Hollifield, your leadership coach. So the question that came through my inbox was, how do you manage your manager? So I'm going to teach you guys something really, really quick. It's my personal method. I call it the boss up method and it'll help you manage up. All right. So understand this though. If your bad manager happens to be a bad person, then this approach may not be as effective. So you may need to enlist some help. Maybe someone who shares the same title as your bad manager or someone who is equivalent in rank. Because bad people, unfortunately, a lot of times they're not open to hear anything that anyone else has to say if that person doesn't have direct control over what they do or if that person isn't at least what they may consider our level. But if your bad manager is a good person, then this is certainly going to help you at least make some headway when it comes to the idea of managing up that ladder. Okay, so the first thing you want to do with boss up is to build a bridge, right? So when we think about building a bridge, what does that really mean? That's your communication piece. So here's your boss, here's you, you need to build that bridge. And then that bridge, that foundation is that communication. Because that's how things get done. That's how things happen. That's one of the first essential things when we think about managing up. It's that communication. Because if they don't hear it, if they don't know, then things go unsaid, things go unresolved. And that just puts more pressure on you because now you have to live with whatever terrible situation has been created. So the first thing that you're going to do when it comes to bossing up, managing up, is to attempt to build that bridge with communication. All right. After you've got a, a communication bridge built, then you're going to operate with the understanding that it not, it's not going to be easy. All right. So you have to put yourself in a state of mind of this will not be an easy task. Yes, I may have opened up the lines of communication. I'm gun ho about what I'm going to do in terms of managing up, but it won't be easy, especially when you talk about someone who has been set in their ways for many, many years. Someone who is accustomed to doing things a certain way. Someone who is quite comfortable with the idea of being comfortable. So understand that as you go through this, it won't be an easy process and that will help to put you in a healthy mind frame so that when you get let down, because you will get let down at times, but when you get let down, it won't be such a heavy blow and you'll still have enough energy and enough motivation to push forward um, with the understanding and with the knowledge that things will get better. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set expectations, right? But not just any expectations. We're going to set reasonable expectations. And we're going to actually do that on both sides. We're going to set reasonable expectations on both sides. So you're going to hear your boss out. You're going to listen to your boss. And you're going to allow your boss to create a set of expectations for you, right? Because that's how it always goes. It's always a set of expectations that they have with you when you're bringing expectations with them. But you're going to set some reasonable expectations and think about what's important to you. Think about what the most important things are. All right. And they don't have to be overly complicated. Sometimes it's just as simple as, hey, when you have a, a task for me that's time sensitive, I would appreciate it if you would tell me that in person rather than send an email because I'm not always tied to my email due to the nature of my job. Or when you have to correct me or, you know, do something that's disciplinary, I would appreciate that if you would pull me into the office or take me away from my other peers or, or co-workers, something like that. That's a reasonable expectation. So think about, you know, what really pushes your buttons and what really brings the tension onto this relationship and put that into an expectation. And those are the expectations that you set. Something that's, you know, really, really reasonable and something that could 
be almost pretty much done overnight. All right, so after you set those expectations, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're staying committed to the vision or goal, right? And this is important because a lot of times it's really, really easy to get caught up in our personal feelings and to take things personal. You have to be able to separate it and know that it is business, okay? Sometimes it may feel personal, sometimes it may hurt, but you have to keep your eye on that vision. And when done right, the vision is actually a shared vision between the two, all right? And when it's not done right, when there's actually two different visions, then you have to find a way to merge the two into one. And that's going to be done through our bridge, through our communication bridge. But everything that you do, every expectation that you set, every action that you take has to somehow connect to that vision because if it's not connected to that vision then it probably won't make sense here for our bad manager so you have to find a way to keep it connected to that vision and for you to stay focused on whatever that vision goal or task is that's at hand all right this one is a big one this one is going to help you out a lot this one is under promise and over deliver and this one is great because this one actually puts you in a position to be seen as someone who can get the job done and some all right I know that it may sound a little silly but think about it like this okay if someone asks you to get a task done and they said to you okay about what time would you be able to get this task done for me? And you said five o'clock. The expectation is now set on five o'clock. So five o'clock, it doesn't matter, you know, what happened, what storm came along. If that thing isn't ready by five o'clock, then you're going to be seen as incompetent, unreliable, and a whole other a host of things. All right. That situation would look a lot different. If you said, okay, I'll have it to you by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, but you delivered it by 5 o'clock. That's a whole different scenario. Oh, this person is really reliable. This person is diligent. This person is able to get things done without having to wait until the very last minute. It just sets you in a whole different light, and it really kind of puts the ball in your court when you put yourself in a position where you're under promising and over delivering. Now, that's not going to work in a situation where someone gives you a hard deadline, but you can make it work if you negotiate that deadline and always negotiate to something that you know that you'll be able to crush. Okay? And that's how you play that. You do that and that's really going to help that situation because then at least that person will see you in a little bit of a different light, a more positive light. Okay? And then the last thing that we're going to do when it comes to bossing up is we're going to do positive reinforcement. All right? And this one is important. The positive reinforcement one is important because it helps to reinforce what helps you in the workplace, what motivates you, what is the behavior that you like. Because remember, you had that communication up front while you were building that bridge and you set those expectations. So when bad manager is actually meeting those expectations, you have to get that positive reinforcement so that they know. And that can be something as simple as a sincere thank you or um, you know, just a, a quick email, you know, saying something positive or, you know, even just a, a firm handshake when something is done right. Things like that go a long way because even if people forget what you said, they'll always remember how you made them feel. So if you're making bad manager feel good through this positive reinforcement, trust, they will be doing more of that because it's a good feeling coming back to them. So this is how you boss up. 
You build a bridge, you operate with the understanding that it won't be easy, you set reasonable expectations, you stay committed to the vision, you under-promise, over-deliver, and you do positive reinforcement. All right, so I hope that that helps. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything, absolutely feel free to send me an email or just leave a comment under this. And if you have another topic, something that you'd like for me to address um, in this video format with you, please feel free to shoot me an email at info at joniholifield.com and I will absolutely do that video and get it published so that we all can learn from this. All right, so thank you so much. Go out and have an amazing day.